Hi, this is Scott A. We're back in Studio B at Omega Studios, and today we're going to be talking about some drum preparation prior to your recording session. Oftentimes when bands come into a session, their drums uh, are not sounding so nice, and so there's some things we can do before the session, before we set up the mics, to get the drums sounding a little better, get them uh, ready for recording, such as going over some tuning, um, some dampening of the drums, um, and fixing any rattles and squeaks. All right, so let's get started on the snare drum. Let's see what we got here. It's a ring, not sounding very recording friendly. So the first thing I do is I take all the lugs and I loosen them up. So I got the head loose, nice and dead. Now what we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, go through and we're gonna, I'm gonna use my fingers, I'm gonna tighten all the lugs finger tight all the way around the drum. Just once I get them all equal tension, I'm gonna start on one of the lugs. I'm gonna do one half turn. I'm gonna go to the opposite side of the drum, another half turn. Gonna go to the top of the drum, half turn, half turn. Usually I try to do cross, um, across the lugs to keep the tension even. And I'm gonna start checking the, the tension by, tap, by holding my hand in the center of the, of the drum and tapping around at the lugs. And you can hear a slight pitch differences, which is gonna indicate uh, different tensions. And the idea is I wanna try to get those pitches uh, as equal as I can. So far, so good. So still a low, low, too low of pitch. I'm going to bring it up a little bit more. I'm going to start doing quarter turns now. So now we have the, the head fairly, fairly t evenly tensioned. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of good old gaffer's tape. Classic old school technique um, on dampening drum. And what I like to do with this is I like to take a piece and then I put a little fold in the middle. And this little flap it gives me um, some mass to absorb the vibrations from the drum head. And I usually start with one piece off to the side and then I tap the drum to see how the control is. So it's getting better, still a little bit of ring happening. So I'm going to take another piece and do the same thing. So we're getting there, almost there. It's a nice, nice fat drum sound, it's gonna be nice and dry. Um, and it's going to record really well. This type of drum, this type of snare drum tuning um, actually records really well for a lot of styles of music. Oh yeah, now we got a nice sounding snare drum. It's going to sound really fat in the mix. So now we're going to do the toms. Uh, for the toms, I like to use this device called the Tension Watch. Uh, there's a couple different manufacturers that make similar items. Uh, one called the Drum Dial, this one's called the Tension Watch. Basically what these things do is they measure the surface tension of the head. I'll allow you to get uniform uh, tension across the head, which is going to help it resonate better. So we're going to start with the bottom resonant head first. Um, and again, I like to loosen the lugs. If the drum heads are newer, you might want to do a little CPR on them to help crack the glue. And get them stretched to help them get, their, to get it seated on the bearing edge of the shell. Uh, and then I'm going to do the tension watch. These things uh, usually come with a little uh, reference guide to give you suggestions as to what the reading should be on there. Uh, when you do the, the tuning from lug to lug. Um, I happen to have some ones that I, that I like to use for the size drum for the bottom head. Um, it's going to be uh, number 60 as far as the tension watch goes. And so usually I'm going to bring the lug up to just below my point. Um, I'm going to bring them all up to 50. And you put the tension watch about, about an inch inside the head, uh, in, I mean an inch inside the shell um, from, the, from the edge of the, the rim. And I usually bring them all up to 50 and then work them up because as you turn lug, as you tighten one lug up, you're still you're going to pull adjoining uh, lugs tight as well. Um, so it's kind of kind of got to milk it, kind of work it a little bit, take it slow, uh, and slowly work your way up to um, the desired uh, number. So we're approaching 60, and again working in a crisscross fashion. All right, we're all dialed in. I'm just gonna double check by listening for pitch. Um, that sounded pretty, um, sounded pretty good. Nice smooth resonance. Nice smooth ring on the head. Don't have uh, any beating frequencies. So that's the bottom head. I'm just gonna flip it over. We're gonna do the top head. 
Um, again, I'm going to start by loosening the lugs. Uh, for this particular top head, this is a two-ply um, pinstripe by Remo. Uh, I like to tune these at about 50 on a 16-inch floor tom. Again, just working up slowly. Then once you get on the ballpark, I'm just going to go around and kind of fine tune. Some of them need to come up a little bit, some of them need to go down a little bit. Because as you tighten or loosen one, it also affects the tension on the ones that are near it. Let's uh, see what we got. Man, we got some tuned heads. Not gonna repeat the same procedure for the other tom. And lastly, we got the bass drum. What I like to do with the bass drum is loosen the head again, like we did with the other drums. Oh, I don't use the tension watch thing for this. What I do is I'll, I'll go through and I'll tighten them up one at a time. Um, I usually just tighten it up enough to get the wrinkles out of it. And then if it seems to be, uh, seems to be too low of a pitch, then I'll, I'll work it up a little bit or, or loosen it up a little bit to tune the pitch. Oh, and then I'll go through and just get things just finger tight. And a little bit more tension, I think. Something like that, and just make sure all the wrinkles are out of it. And lastly, I like to put a little blanket or a pillow or even just somebody's jacket laying around the session. Stick that inside the drum to help control the resonance of the front head uh, and the beater head. Give us a nice, tight, focused uh, bass drum sound. Uh, and there's some quick and easy tips to get the drums ready for recording in no time flat.